Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Isa from the University of Zurich. Today I'm going to talk about the chromosomal scale assembly of the Livos Mercantia Palatia. As an introduction part, we're going to uh, talk um, about Mercantia Palatia as a model for plant microbe interaction. We're going to see also the DNA um, quality and purity that we use for this assembly, uh, this assembly part sequencing and then we're gonna compare finally uh, our newly assembled genome with the available Macantia polymorpha reference genome. All right, so we assume that life has evolved on Earth from a prokaryotic cell um, after an endosymbiotic event with a alpha protobacterium that we know later as the mitochondria. The cell that have survived from that first um, endosymbiotic events have been uh, exposed to another event, this time with a cyanobacteria later evolved as a chloroplast. And both of those two events participate to shape life on Earth and, and to help plants to better cooperate with its environment. Much more uh, microbe has interacting with plant, but just a small part has till now uncovered. Marcantia has become a um, standard um, model when it comes to um, um, plant science because not just it has this incredible dual system of reproduction, but after three weeks, we can go from a spore to an adult plant. And it has also a second, a second method of reproduction where both of the male and the female sexual structure are involved. Next to Marcantia polymorpha, which now from um, from the from the from recent work that we know that Marcantia can be um, inoculate uh, from an oxo from from an um, from an microbe, but we don't know or we are not sure about its interaction with the fungal or the mycorrhiza, which has been shown and discovered in Marcantia palatia. So both of this genome uh, has this um, advantage to be in the haploid state in most of their lifetime, which give them um, this possibility to, um, to outcome with a very high um, pure DNA, but also easy to sequence and to process. Now, one of the reasons that we think this gap has need to be fulfilled uh, between the land plant and the angiosperm is because by using those plants, we can address a lot of questions like uh, the sex chromosome uh, evolution in haploid plants by not pulling all our scaffold as sex chromosome. Now, this brings us to our second point, which is the importance of um, DNA quality into sequencing. And in 2019, when we are starting our first extraction, we had this paper who come with uh, the requirement that has to be needed before to load the uh before the load the mean iron and one of those actually was using or the setup or the big purification that has been the two method that we use and here i'm showing the profiling that we obtain after that we process into sequencing and assembly by using the library kit 109 for flow cell in parallel into a green iron just to remember that we're dealing here with a genome size which is around 250 megabase pair so here I'm showing a profile of our read length distribution. Overall, we have 2 million of reads into uh, 12 gigs. We also could have an N50 uh, over, third, uh, uh, over 17 um, kilobase pair. By using that input, we use different algorithms to assemble our genome. And most of the assembly that we have yield the estimated genome size. So for the miniars, the tulip and the WTDBG, the difference were both in the genome size, but we filter based on the GC content. Because they have um, this different GC content, we assume that all the sequence over 6% um, of GC content has to be removed. Overall, we remove seven mega um, of sequence and our assembly um, has been totalized 250 mega base pair. Then what we do next is to compare our genome with the reference genome. But as you can see here in the table, 
uh, the genome that we have to yield show uh, twice less the number of scar fold by having a total length which is higher. Overall, in right, we see the comparison, the dot plot with the um, draft assembly of, um, of Marcantia palatia, and in top we have our, our reference genome. In the right, we have the Illumina genome, and you can see that there are a, a, a very, very nice contribution between the two genomes. Next, what we did is to upgrade our genome into the chromosomal scale, and here we show uh, that by doing so, we could improve in the right the N50 uh, drastically, but also by checking um, um, the linkage density histogram, we can see clearly the different attack which has been highly and um, accurately uh, put together into a uh, night scarf fold that has um, we, that has a length around 30 mega base pair for each of them. And we think that those eight scar folds correspond to this eight, um, those eight scar folds, which has the size of the chromosome level correspond to the, uh, to the eight chromosome of the Marcantia Panatia. Now for the last part, we annotate the genome and try to check, uh, we lift off the, 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 the sorry, we, we check out the annotation of the of the two genome by comparing the Marcantia polymorpha and the Marcantia palatia. What we discover is in palatia we have much more a higher uh, copy number in unique gene, but also um, the a larger proportion that is shown here in blue. And we think that some of these genes might be involved in the endosymbiosis and which is absent into the Marcantia uh, polymorpha. And finally, we know that in Marcantia polymorpha, the content of the transposable element is around 20%. So here, uh, in our second investigation, we uh, sequence these uh, two genomes that are 6% of, um, of estimate genome size, the liver roots, um, and we think by <clears throat> using this data and adding the chromosome that we just introduced here today, we can unravel the transposable content into uh, Marcantia by using long weight. And without um, any other transition, I want to thank you for your attention.